In the first part of this video series, we modeled the first part of this chapel. Now we're going to create the roof and finish it. So let's get started. First, we're going to select um, with C the whole faces on the roof and then extrude them up just a little bit. Um, now we can select the small outer loop with Alt and then deselect the front ones and then do an inset again. So here I'm just changing the depth a little bit to get that kind of roof that's going out. Next, we want to create the actual roof. Um, first, I thought I extrude all of the faces um, upwards, but then I thought, okay, it's better to do them separate. So I'm just selecting the back part and then extruding them on the ZX. The only thing we have to do now is just merge all the vertices in the middle and we have our roof, the first part of it. So after we don't need that many um, faces on top of the roof, we can reduce them as we did in the first part. So you can select an edge and then press G twice to slide it along. And um, I'm just leaving, giving here like one edge in the middle. In face selection mode, I'm going to use C again to paint over the first part of the roof and then also extrude that one up. I want to have it a little bit lower than the first one, um, but other than that, just, you know, go by look. Then I'm going to scale it on the Y axis and next I'm just going to select all the little vertices and then merge them at the center as we did with the other roof. But this time we're not merging them all together, but keeping just the ones that are kind of opposite of each other. The last vertice I then just going to grab and move it along the X axis to um, kind of put it towards the first roof. So next um, we can create a loop cut and then move that one up just really close to the top edge and then the same on the other side. And then we're going to use the knife tool again to just create a little kind of circle towards them. So we have one loop. Um, next I'm going to reduce or move the edges again. So I'm going to grab the other ones move them outwards and then the two inner ones move them inwards and then off top of there I also going to reduce them but here I just going to select the vertices and then move them towards the middle. The middle vertice I just going to pull a little bit down so now when I'm selecting um, all the front faces and then extruding them I get a nice small roof at the front which all has the same um, width to all sides. Now for the part where the two roofs are actually connecting. Um, we need to do a little work here later for now. I'm just going to select some of the edges to reduce them. So I'm just going to leave the middle edge and the other ones i going to merge with the outer or the middle one. I did this in wireframe mode so I could simply grab one of the vertices and then move them along. Okay, for the little tower we need one more loop cut. So just add one more loop cut barely in the middle and then select the faces and extrude them upwards. Now press S, then Z and 0 to scale them on the Z axis and align them all. Next extrude them maybe a little bit more and then scale them in, extrude them and then maybe scale them in again. And if you're not happy with the proportion you can always go um, in wireframe like I did and maybe side view and then move the faces a little up or down depending on what you want. And uh, now it's basically basically just um, selecting them, extruding them, scaling, extruding, you know, just to get a nice little shape, um, whatever you are going for. And then again, we can remove some of the edges we have. So here in front, we can simply select one, um, deselect the first one and press G twice to slide it along. Just always when, you may, um, when you're doing something like that, make sure that uh, you don't have selected some wrong ones and maybe in the back of the mesh you're doing something weird. So now we can try to make that little um, sphere on top of this tower. So I'm just going to extrude it a long way up and then adding a lot of loop cuts. And then by selecting the middle one and enabling proportional editing, we can simply just scale the middle one up and all the others around it will kind of scale proportional to it. So this way we can kind of create this like nice round shape um, and in the top we can scale a little bit more towards each other and then also uh, merge them together as we did before with the roof. If you're using proportional editing for the first time, um, it's maybe worth noticing that with the mouse wheel you can kind of define the degree of how much you're affecting the other vertices or the other edges, whatever you have selected. And um, 
just sometimes you have to toggle it on and off so by pressing O because sometimes you don't want to use it for example if you just move it up like that or not. As we already did before we can remove some of the vertices um, in general I like to um, not show the floor so I can see exactly what we have but for now we can just work on the roof so just selecting a few vertices and then pressing G twice again to move them along. Um, when removing vertices just make sure that you're removing those ones that you really don't need so um, just keep that maybe for later only when you're sure that you don't need it anymore. Next we can take a look at the parts where the two roofs are um, overlapping. Currently we have here still two hidden faces and you always want to retract, uh, want to try to reduce those ones. So what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to take the knife tool and then create an edge exactly um, where the smaller one, the smaller faces are on um, the big ones. So just with the knife tool along the, the, the bigger face. <laughs> And then uh, we can simply delete the smaller face underneath and uh, then just connect the two by merging them together the top vertices. So just uh, Alt M again and then um, we don't have those hidden faces anymore um, on the one side and then for the other side we can simply delete them. Okay, now that this is done, um, the next thing I want to do is create a little roof ridge so i gonna add again a loop cut and just move it a little bit up and then also in the back and then i'm gonna lose the, uh, use the edge slide again to make them parallel to the actual rooftop and then now uh, we can merge the ones we don't need so i just want to use the ones that are actually on the roof so the other ones we can slide along to the middle one and then um, get rid of them again like we did before and um yeah on top i just um i didn't want to use the whole loop so i just started with some vertices and then i with alt i could select a loop okay and then we can just select all the faces that we created so the top ones and then use the insert face again so i just gonna um increase the depth a bit and uh, we have a nice little roof ridge the end I also extruded the front ones just a little bit so the actual ridge goes over the roof but not too much just giving that a small little detail. For the other roof I also want to create the same so I'm just selecting the um, outer ones and then do a bevel so I got like a wider um, edge and um, yeah just play around with the, the values a little bit and then do an inset again and then on top um, we can do the same as we did before so we can extrude it and then scale it on a set axis to get it like nice and flat on top and then just move it a little bit up and extrude it again scale it again you know just doing it all over again until we have a nice shape um, I decided to go with a really simple shape on top of this roof so just a small little Thing on top of it and then um, I try to kind of make the one those those edges we created a little bit more resolving into the other roof so then they don't stick out that much um, yeah but for the other sides I think that's fine so I'm gonna leave that as it is and then I realized I had a little mistake on top of there so I used a knife tool to create a new edge and then um, used uh, the delete or dissolve edges so I could get rid of the ones that were wrong. I guess that was when I was moving them around and didn't look much. So I just easily fixed it just by looking at it and then moving it around. And I had the same at the top. So again, the knife tool and then dissolving the edges that shouldn't be there and then just moving the one vertice that's standing out a little bit that you can see from the side or front view, um, just moving that one back so it's aligning with the actual ones where it should go. Now the last thing I want to add is some small windows at the top. So I'm going to select always two of the faces and then do an inset. Um, here I'm just changing the thickness and then doing the same for the other two sides. Also doing an inset and after I type the value I can just uh, repeat it easily. Uh, now I'm just selecting the outer top vertices and then pulling them a bit down so we have a bit same window form like we have um, in the window at the bottom 
And now when I select them, I can do another inset again, uh, again, just the thickness, and then one more inset to um, pull them back. So here I'm just changing the depth and uh, I have a nice window. So the only thing I wanna add is a little detail that is kind of the window frame. So I'm just selecting the outer loops and then changing the depth so it's standing a bit out. It's giving it a nice um, depth, I think, to the whole object and then some nice detail. So um, we're actually finished. So the only thing we are now, um, or we can now do is reduce some of the faces we have. Um, so we're just gonna do what we did before, selecting a loop and then seeing um, if we can move it somewhere without actually changing the original shape. So especially at the bottom of the chapel, we don't need all those faces so we can reduce that. And at the windows, we also still have some um, a lot of faces so we don't need because they're all on a flat surface so here you know you can just uh, go around try to resolve as much as you can um, sometimes you just have to move um, one of the edges and see how it looks if it's changing anything or if you maybe uh, deselect a few of them also at the bottom I realized I'm missing some edges um, it's not really necessary that you have squares or triangles here because the bottom normally no one sees it but I think it's easier because then you can easier move loops around and I just, I know I, I feel more comfortable if I'm having a uh, just triangle and square faces and not uh, end guns or something. Okay, that was it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you can follow it, understand everything. Um, if you have any, I don't know, opinions, comments, whatever, just let me know and I see you in the next one.